right. So for those just joining, it looks like our next presentation is actually possibly going to go uh, off without a hitch, hopefully, cross our fingers. Um, for anyone new, my name is Chase DeMarco. I am now going to be your official technical juggler. I'm no longer calling myself the host because <laughs> juggling all of these different things at once has definitely added a new uh, challenge and skill set to my repertoire. But our next presentation is going to be from Dr. Andre Smith. And he is going to actually, this might be a different discussion than we originally had in the uh, schedule since he was going to do something live, but was called away. So uh, actually, this is going to be a surprise to me, too. I'm going to load the video. So it should display in about one to two minutes. If you don't see anything displaying, try to refresh the page. Sometimes it does get a little locked up here and hop in. But we will start the next presentation very shortly. What is up? What is up? <laughs> I know, right? Marco starts off. Is this good connection? Does it work? Can you guys actually hear me and see me? Because earlier it was all messed up. We are going to talk about reading, guys, and reading speed, how you can be faster readers, how you can be better readers. This is going to be an action-packed section session. That's why I've got the blackboard going so we can get this going. If you want to learn how to read better, if you want to read faster, this is the video for you. So check it out, y'all. Let's get it going. But stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. All right, is the, is the feed actually working this time? Marco, I'm asking you. Lola, I'm asking you. Damar, what up? Can you guys actually see me? Can you hear me? Am I 2020 coming at you? Can you see me? I'm moving, I'm moving. Am I too fast for the camera? What's happening? Let me know you guys can actually see me. <laughs> I'm glad Harpreet's working better. So we're talking about reading today. Reading is the topic of the day. This is a tip number two. I actually tried this uh, before I went to work and uh, it didn't go well. So now we're doing it a second time for you guys. You guys just wanted to see me get on this blackboard a second time. So we're talking about reading and we're talking about reading speed, right? You clicked on this because you want to read fast. And I think what's important is that we understand that just because we read fast, or just because we read slow, it doesn't, it's not indicative in itself of whether we are a quality reader or not, right? So some people say, oh, I'm a slow reader, so that means I'm a bad reader. Not necessarily. Some people say, oh, I'm a fast reader, so that means I'm a great reader. Not necessarily. So let's talk about it, guys. There is a difference. Speed does not always equal quality. But your reading speed does impact the quality of, and we are live action, so of course, my daughter wants to come hang out with me. Hi, Cameron. I gotta go poop. Okay, you go poop. This is the, the beauty of us being locked up right now for social distancing, is I am here, I am in the office, and my daughter comes in, right? We can all deal with that. Everyone give me a like right now for Cameron coming in here in her frozen dress, letting us know she has to go potty. <laughs> so speed is not quality. Well, let's break that down. Fast readers. Is there such thing as too fast? Yes. Because you may be reading fast, but actually you are making yourself slower because when we read too fast, we don't give our brain time to actually process the material. We must process. That is the intent. That is the purpose of reading Seeing the letters is not the same as understanding the letters. It's not the same as remembering the letters. So we must read at a speed that allows us to comprehend. Because if we read so fast that we don't actually comprehend, what happens, guys? What happens? We have to reread. And so, yes, you are a fast reader. But in actuality and in aggregate, you are a slow reader. Oh, so we don't want to read too fast and neglect comprehension. Does that make sense? On the other end, people say, okay, well, listen, I'm just going to read as slow as I can. That's going to boost my comprehension. That's not true either. In addition to taking a long time if you read slow, studies have shown that when you are a slow reader, when you read so slow like this, Right? It's like someone reading to you and they read really slow. Hi, guys. I'm reading this letter, right? It's terrible. And what do you do? You immediately zone out. You go to your phone. Well, when you read slow, you are doing this to yourself. 
you are taking down your attention. Your brain says, man, I am so bored. This is so slow, right? <laughs> and so your attention wanders. How many of you guys are wandering readers? That's what I'm gonna call it. You guys are wandering readers. I was in the book and the next thing I know, I woke up and I was at a party. I don't know how it happened, but it happened, right? You're a wandering reader. We don't wanna lose attention because we're reading too slow. So what we have to do is be like Goldilocks, not too fast, not too slow. We wanna get it just right to where we are forcing our brain to pay attention, to be focused, but allowing ourselves the time to create comprehension. As a side note, for all of you guys, right, we're doing social distancing right now, and you guys are watching on-demand lectures. You guys are like, yes, this is amazing, because I can watch it 4x speed and be done with it in a quarter of the time. And that sounds great, but how many of you guys don't have time to take the note when it's going that fast, don't have time to hear what they're saying when it's going that fast. And you have to pause, you have to rewind, you have to re-listen. You're doing the same thing. You're costing yourself time. So take your time, watch that lecture at the appropriate speed, okay? That was just a little tidbit there. So understand that speed is not synonymous with quality and that our reading speed actually affects our quality. The second thing we do is that we want to focus on qual quality reading. So how do we improve our reading? The first thing is that we make reading a habit. We make reading a habit. How many of you guys are habitual readers? Like Charlie Murphy said, he was a habitual line stepper. How many of you guys are habitual readers? Meaning that reading is a habit, like stunting is a habit. That's two pop culture references. Back to back, baby, I'm on fire. How many of you guys make reading a habit? I'll wait. We are live action. Comment in the box, y'all. This is Dr. Pines. We are live action on the YouTube right now. We are teaching. Everybody got this? this? Am I still coming through 2020? We're not buffering today. We are rolling with this live action feed. Kasim, let me know where we at. Lola, are you getting me? 25, 25? Is that better than 2020? <laughs> right? Not me. I see a lot of not me's in the box. Not me. We got to make that reading a habit, guys. Every single day, you should be reading. If you guys ever catch me at a conference, if I'm keynoting, I want you to run to me and say, hey, Dr. Pinesan, what books you got today? And not book, books plural, because I always carry at least two, oftentimes more than that. Now my wife was nice enough to give me a Kindle, save my back, I'm getting old, so I don't have to carry all the books with me. I got my Kindle, I got unlimited access to books, y'all. Boom, right? So we make reading a habit. By making reading a habit, it does two things. One is it increases the amount of reading practice that you get. What did your parents always tell you? Practice makes perfect. So many of you guys hate to read, so therefore, what do you do? You avoid it like the plague, therefore you never get practice reps and you never get opportunities to improve your reading. So simply by reading more and making reading a habit and reading every single day, you will notice, holy smokes, my. My reading is improving. I, I, I'm, I'm becoming a competent reader. Oh my gosh, right? It's amazing. Simply because you're getting more opportunities to practice reading and reading well. The other thing it does is it increases your incitement. Why? Because for many students, we only ever read when we're assigned a textbook. And you guys know when you're assigned reading for a class, how many times are you like, oh man, I am so glad they assigned this book. I am so excited to read Dr. So-and-so's fifth edition of Advanced Extremely Boring Chemistry, right? You never say that, right? <laughs> you're never excited to read those textbooks. So therefore, you aren't excited about reading because reading for you becomes synonymous with books you don't like. So by making reading a habit and choosing your books actively, you get to put, pick books that you are excited about. Excited about. And that is powerful. Juhi, what up? That is powerful. Why? Because an excited reader is an engaged reader. Right? When you're on a date, right, and that girl is engaging with you in a conversation, you know she's excited to be there. So you're like, ooh, she's engaging. She's excited. I'm in play. 
right? But for many of you guys, you go on a date with that book and there is no spark. There is no sparkle in your eye for that book. There are no feelings of excitement and attraction between you and that book. So you are disengaged. And a, a not, if an excited reader, right? If you're not excited, you're not engaged, you're not going to be an excellent reader. I say excited readers are engaged readers are excellent readers. So what we want to do is create excitement with our reading by reading lots of stuff for fun. I love to read, y'all. My favorite book, Green Eggs and Ham. Why? Because it's a simple, fun, enjoyable read. I was so happy when I had kids, I could bring out Green Eggs and Ham and not be ashamed. I'm a grown man reading Green Eggs and Ham. But it's because I made excitement around my reading. Excitement. That excitement will hone your brain in and say, oh, I'm so excited. This juicy 500-page book. woo Right? Because some of you guys, how many of you guys can bust out a Harry Potter novel in an afternoon, but if I gave you a 10-page science report, it would take you five weeks? <laughs> Taylor says, me all day. Right? How do you guys are out here, if I gave you Harry Potter or Twilight, my wife, she'll, she'll read a Twilight book in an hour. She loves that vampire garbage, vampires and werewolves. Right? But if I handed her a science textbook, she'd be like, I don't know if I can do it. All of a sudden, my ability to read is gone. <laughs> Because she's not excited, so she's not engaged. So if you guys want to be better readers, we got to make it a habit. we got to get excited and engaged. The third thing, or the second thing you can do is forced fluidity. Meaning, when you read, you want to be fluid. You want to roll through the material. Yes, we want to roll through the material. Many of you guys, almost every student, every child is taught to read, the cat jumped through the hoop, word by word. The problem with that is that that gets you focused on the micro and makes it harder because your brain has to process all those words and has to process all of those words separately as opposed to processing them as they were meant to be processed which is in groups, because the group of words creates meaning, creates context. So we want to be contextual readers. We also want to be conceptual readers focused on concepts. So we don't want to be stuck on each word. So to overcome that, we want to use, depending on who you talk to, markers, pointers, trackers, pacers, name the word people use, but you want to use something that gets your eyes to move fluidly across the page. Whether it's your finger, whether it's a marker, whether it's a pencil, you want to use this to guide your eyes. Smooth, 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 back and forth across the page so you can be a fluid reader. And so by using this, you're forcing yourself to stay at this pace. Oh my gosh, I want to focus on individual words, but it's moving too fast. And we start to see groups of words. And what's really boss about this, guys, and you can really force yourself, it's kind of really cool. So if we read word by word, we have to read all those words to complete a sentence or complete a paragraph, whatever. And so we can only go as fast as we can read. Say there's 10 words in a sentence, we'd have to read all 10. But when you use a pacer and you force yourself to see groups of words, eventually you get to the point where your brain actually filters out unimportant words and only looks for important words. So it starts to figure, to filter out the, of, et cetera. Like the words like that that don't mean anything, it just focuses on the key, pivotal words, right? Like so when people tell you about, oh, for critical reading on your MCAT, you should be looking for words that are clauses that change the sentence. Which of these are not, right? All of these except, right? You look for key words like that. Well, if you guys are forcing yourselves to be fluid, you actually are developing that reading every single time you read. We are forcing ourselves to think in that mode. So guess how great we're going to be on tests. Guess how great. <laughs> right? Guess how great. We're going to be amazing. Amazing. Yes. And Lethal just asked the question, any advice is difficult for me to read and produce certain words. Are you ready for this, Lethal? Here we go. This is the second part of fluidity. Vocab. Remember those SAT words? Like, man, why do I have to memorize these SAT words? They were trying to help you out. They were trying to tell you building a solid vocabulary 
is the key to being a great reader. Many of you guys aren't able to read fluidly, fluidly <laughs> because your vocabulary isn't strong enough. You guys can read a third grade level book, but if I gave you an advanced textbook or I gave you an MCAT passage or a DAT passage, you struggle. Why? What's changed? You've you read your whole life. The change is they're using words you're unfamiliar with. They've exceeded your vocabulary and turned you in from a great reader. They made you um, either mediocre or even worse, they made you a terrible reader because you're overwhelmed by the vocabulary. So you're not reading fluidly. And when you're not reading fluidly, what are you then doing? You're focusing on each individual word and you're losing the larger context and the concepts. Additionally, you're going to be rereading, which costs you time. And what do you not have on standardized tests? Come on, y'all, an abundance of time. So what we have to do is build our vocabulary. Very simple to do, guys, very simple exercise. I have a book, and you can pick any book, but I picked a book because I thought it was cool, it had a lot of words. It's called Isms, Ologies, and something other else. And what I would do when I was building my vocabulary was I would open this book up, turn to some random page, and it would be some word I'd never heard before. And then I would take that word, and I would try to use that word in every single opportunity I had that week, whether it was writing, whether it was speaking, whether whatever it is, I tried to use that word. So it became ingrained in my brain, right? Because if we don't use it, we lose it. I don't lose the word. I want to I use that word. So I want to use it so I can keep it. And I built my vocabulary. And despite how I speak, right? Because I like to be relaxed. I feel like I don't have to be pompous to talk to you guys, right? Can we agree? Can we, can we give me a like on not being pompous? If I was pompous, would you guys listen to me? Some of you guys say, wait, what does pompous mean? It's one of my SAT words, y'all. Don't worry about it. Right? I can talk to you like this, but if I had to, I could pull it back. And I could talk to you very highbrow with all my big fancy words. That's because I took the time to actively build our vocabulary. And you guys know, I'm always saying, if we're not being active and intentional and purposeful with what we're doing, if we don't have an intention behind our action, it's empty. So I worked with intention to build my vocabulary. You guys need to do the same. If you want to be a great reader, you got to have a great vocabulary. Otherwise, it's not going to happen for you, okay? So you have to have a great vocabulary. The third thing, guys, is that when we are going through and we are trying to be a great reader, too often I see students think they're going to develop their reading simply by reading in a vacuum. We must have questions associated with our reading. I hear so many students come to me like, yeah, you know, I'm really going to improve my critical reading because I've been reading lots of journal articles. And I'm like, yeah, all that's cool. That's high level reading. But that's only the first equation to improving your reading ability, to improving your critical thinking ability, to improve your critical reading ability. Yes, we read difficult passages, but the second and even more important part is to follow that with questions because without the questions, how do we know how well we understood, how well we interpreted, how well we remembered what we read in that article? So if there are no questions associated with what we're reading, we are learning in a vacuum and we don't know what we're doing. Does that make sense? The equivalent would be Who's ever seen that movie, The Gods Must Be Crazy? Right? In the African tribe, they get that Coca-Cola bottle, and they do everything with it but what you're supposed to do with it, which is drink out of it. And the reason is because a tool, an instrument, an intention, without an understanding is empty. So you guys may intend to be great readers. You may think you're being a great reader, but if you didn't assess it, if there's no one telling you, mm, you didn't understand that passage, you have no idea where you're going. So when people say, oh, I'm reading lots of journal articles to prepare for the MCAT, I say, well... Cool, but that's not really going to help you. We must follow what we read with questions that test us and say, hmm, did you comprehend? Did you actually read well? So that way you can have a monitor of your skill development. Additionally, by having questions after you read, it allows you, it gives you an opportunity to work on your test taking skills, your question answering skills, your problem solving skills. Are those important? Where would those help you?
probably every test you ever have to take. You've got to learn to answer questions, how questions are asked, how to get at the multiple choice, how to get a free response. You've got to be able to get at them. So every time you do a practice, a practice passage or read a book and you follow with questions, you're creating practice attempts that will improve your critical reading, your critical thinking, your problem solving, your analytical skills, which are not only helpful on tests, but guess what, guys, are helpful in life. Being a fast and versatile and critical thinking person, that's how you get paid the big bucks. So questions. As an extension of that for the bonus points, discussion. For my people on here who are graduate students or who have been to graduate school or, or aspire to go to graduate school, you should understand that graduate school training, much of it revolves around discussion, revolves around free thought essays based on prompts, not multiple choice. Why? Because discussion, free response, right? Long form writing and talking, that's a deeper level of understanding than questions. So if we read something, it would be great if we could discuss it with someone to see different perspectives, to see different angles, to get clarity on what we said, saw and to get feedback on the way that we understand things. So wouldn't it be great if you formed, say, a book club or a journal club that you could meet with to discuss what you're reading? That way you could take it to the next notch, the next level, and get abstract thinking, get extrapolation, right? And on these big tests, like an MCAT, what makes them difficult is we read something and the answer isn't in the passage. The answer is actually must be extrapolated from what we know. From the data we're given, we must extrapolate. From what we're given in plain English, we must pull the abstract. So if we practice doing this every time we read, guess how great of a test taker, money maker, we gonna be, y'all? That's starting to get there. There's a lot more things you guys can do, but does everybody understand? If you want to improve your reading speed and improve the quality of your reading, we must understand too fast is bad, too slow is just as bad. We got to be just right. And we get faster and we get better by making reading a habit because it gives us lots of practice. It increases our enjoyment of reading. We create force fluidity with our reading by using a pacer, or something to guide us as we read, by expanding our vocabulary, and then by testing and stretching our brain and forcing our cognition to improve through questions and discussion. We will be better. Yes, yes, right? If you guys are enjoying this, if you guys like this right now, you better like this video and let me know you appreciate me getting up here and doing the same lecture live twice today for you guys. Tell how much I care about you guys. The first one got messed up. I said, no, they need this information. We're doing it again. So you better light my, my box up with some comments, with some likes right now and make me feel good for sitting here sweating in these lights. I just got off work at the hospital here with y'all, right? Like this video. All right. I'm going to be bringing you guys every single day. All I'm trying to do, I'm trying to keep it simple, guys. There is a lot of negativity. There's a lot of pessimism. What I'm trying to do is a lot of eye pie in the sky. I'm trying to keep it real with you guys. I'm trying to bring positivity. I'm trying to bring you guys productivity. I'm trying to tell you if you want to get ahead, you got to be working. If you want to get ahead, you got to be sacrificed. If you want to get ahead, get informed. Do we understand? This is a serious place for people who are serious about their future. That's what this is about. So if you are serious about your future, if you like what you got today, take a second, subscribe to the channel. For you guys who are already subscribed, for you guys who are about to subscribe, make sure you also toggle that little bell and say turn on notifications. Not just some, baby. Give me all the notifications because I want to know every single time Dr. Pison is live, dropping knowledge, trying to feed my brain, trying to make me better so that I can be better, right? every single week. All that said, if you really are ready to step up to live this no excuses just dominate life, get to the website, guys. Y'all know the website, studenttransformation.com. It is student, it is transformation, it is .com. And I'm here to transform students like yourself. Get there, get into a course, get to some coaching, get with our bomb community cult of greatness.
cult of greatness, right? Get with us so you can get to your greatness, y'all. That's what it's about. That's what we got going on, and I'm so excited. Check in the box below. I got two free webinars for you guys because we are on social lockdown right now, right? What is it? My aunt said that it's, um, what's the word she used? Not forced encampment. <laughs> Sheltering in. That's what she called it, right? <laughs> this is what it's about. So I got webinars coming for you guys. We are doing, I got my study webinar coming up for you guys. You guys can click register that in the box below. I got my MCAT webinar that is happening. Get in that box. Catch me live. It is an MCAT webinar all about how you can focus in during this time of social distancing and how you can supercharge your MCAT studying. So get in the box below. Click on those. Those are free webinars. And you guys know my webinars. How good are my webinars? Can we comment in the box right now? Let, let people know who have not been to one of my webinars. Taylor, I seen you at a webinar. Kasim, I seen you at a webinar. Let people know these webinars are the biz, y'all. We bring it. That's right. Sally said, let's dominate. Of course, let's dominate. Let's get it. Let's be great because we can all be great. You guys all, if you're anywhere and you're watching, it's your first time watching me. You have greatness inside you guys. You, I'm talking to you. I can see you sitting there holding your phone, half listening to something else. You have greatness inside you. So step up to it. Step up to it and get it, guys. Get that greatness. How do we always end? How do we always end? I'm pointing to cue you, right? I'm your pacer. No excuses. Just dominate. Let's go, guys. See you guys next time. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future in your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better?